Hello, 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 beautiful people of the world. Welcome back to the Happy Idea Show. Here you can learn and flourish with the thoughts, ideas, and the stories of the lifestyle legend. I am your host, Happy Ben Sears, certified career and lifestyle coach and expert and author. Today, I would like to share you a very simple, a lovely gift for you all listeners, whoever have supported me throughout the time around the world. This gift is a very close to my heart. And this gift is my book, an ebook. This is the audiobook exclusive interview of my ebook. I'm going to give to you all for your mental chewing diet. Now, this book is not an ordinary book because it has been co authored by several other successful people around the world. And this book name is called Pathway to a Positive Mental Attitude, 17 Steps to Success. Now, in this book, I have mentioned all my adversity defeats and all the victories which I have since our two decades. How I overcome my childhood, to traumatize my being homeless twice, sleeping on park benches, to having worked the achievements which I have today with all the great support of the who's who of the people. Now, in this audiobook, there are two exclusive interview audios. Number one will be going the extra mile principles, which we can learn from. We can do more in order to earn more. And why we should do little more than we are paid for, this is one of the hidden secrets I will release in this audio that you can learn and flourish with that ideas. If you already know what going the extra mile is, so I want to say congratulations on that. And the second interview exclusive audio will be pleasing personality. Now, I believe that each and every one of us has our own pleasing personality. Some people are very smart enough to portray and utilize their pleasing personality in their personal and professional areas. Now, if somebody is lacking with the pleasing personality, they can also learn from other successful people, which I have also learned. So I have shared all my hidden secrets, which are not so much secrets. It's a simple principles and method and strategy of daily living in the pleasing personality. I hope you will like this audio. If you like, you can share, comment and follow. Subscribe my YouTube channel and podcast channel and review it if you think so that if you like something out of this, share with your beloved one and spread the joy of happiness and your legacy and as your lifestyle can be remarkable as the other people have done so you can do it without any hesitance. And if you are already successful, you're living your lifestyle, I wanna say congratulations one more time. This is Happy Bains here. And of course you can buy this book on my website called www.happybains.com or www.happyideashow.com. I would love to listen to your comments on this specific episode. This is my a small gift to you all the listeners for throughout the year you have supported me. Dear lovely listener, do you know what is the most important thing behind writing my first book is and was that eight years ago, I was crowned with an honor to be a certified leader with the Napoleon Hill Foundation in USA. Yes, Napoleon Hill, if you remember, the mo- one of the most towering giant book called Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill was the author of a Think and Grow Rich and several other books he have written in past. And that book is towering giant and made many more millionaires around the world. And eight years ago, I have done research and study, over 18,000 hours of research and study, and I was approved and I was honored to become a certified leader of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And I was so inspired by the Napoleon Hill's principle, how he worked under with Andrew Carnegie and other significant, most powerful people like Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, and so on. And that book, Think and Grow Rich book, is changed and improved so many millions of people of life around the world. It's been written in 1937. And when I read that book many years ago, 
that shook my head and I said, I really would I want to learn about the reasoning, the root cause of this principles and all. So after the, doing that research and study, I did the certification course, went to USA and was crowned with the certification. After that, I decided with my students, my colleagues, who also got certified. And with their help, we all wrote this book together. And one of the remarkable thing you can learn from my book, Pathway to a Positive Mental Attitude, is one of the questions which I ask to my all clients and students is that, what do you want most in your life? Is it money, fame, power, contentment, peace of mind, personality, happiness, love? Do you know these are the most essential things, important thing in our life? We can have all whatever we need and want and desire. But what is more important? How to get it? How other people have achieved that? And if you are seeking something in this book, you will reveal all the hidden secret in my first book called Pathway to a Positive Mental Attitude. So I am so delighted and honored that you have taken your precious time to listen one of my exclusive interview of my ebook. And I hope sincerely as I have improved my life and you will improve and change your lifestyle and which will turn into the living legacy and you will become a wall clock that other people should watch it. So enjoy. Thank you so much. So sit back, relax, and listen to Pathway to a Positive Mental Attitude. Welcome back, everyone. Today we have with us Napoleon Hill certified leader, Happy Baines, who is talking about principle number four, which is going the extra mile. Happy, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Mike, and thanks to everyone and to all my peers, especially Don Green and all my colleagues um, who have joined this journey. It couldn't be more incredible than this. It's an honor and privilege to be here online with you, Mike. Thank you. Super. You're welcome. You know, I want to talk about going the extra mile because I just feel like in today's society, it is so needed mm -hmm. because people feel like this is my job description. I do this and I'm done. But give us a background mm -hmm. on what going the extra mile is and why is it so relevant for today? Well, thanks uh, for asking you this question. It's one of my favorite principles, and I think it has to uh, relate to my personal own story. Um, where I started my earning. Uh, how did I realize going the extra mile is also principle and is the way of method where we can reap the rewards for our good service and product which we provide to the world? It goes back to uh, when I was eight years old when I started earning my first uh, not a salary, but a, a, a money. My uncle used to have a bicycle, and one day I just washed his bicycle, and in the evening he gave me five cents. And I said, why did you give me that? He said, oh, I noticed that you washed my bike. And then next day I did the same thing without he asked me to do at the first time. And then I did for two days, and I got another five cents. And then I got another third day, I got five cents. But on the fourth day, I got nothing. So I said, Uncle, why did not you give me five cents today? He said, uh, my dear son, and uh, you did not wash my bicycle. I said, oh, interesting. So on the fifth day, I shined his bike like it was a brand new, spokes uh -huh. and rims and everything. And then he gave me 10 cents that day. Then I asked my uncle, why did you give me 10 cents today? He said, you, you went above and beyond to shine and sparkle my bike, so you get five cents extra. Since then, till today, I got that concept, the idea of going the extra mile. I said, if you do your best, not the best, but the excellent, you get the excellent reward. So one of yes. my favorite quotes I invented since childhood is, when we do excellent service, we reap excellent rewards. And we do poor service, we reap poor rewards. So there is nothing cheated in that. So since then, I've been practicing this going the extra mile principles. And without asking, if we do our best to provide the best service, best love, best respect, little extra, and it comes back in a very abundant way, and everybody feels happy. And, and I think that today, a lot of people have a uh, lack of self-discipline on persistence, so yes. they want the rewards right away, so they don't go extra mile. So the most common habit of today's young people and all, most of the people is lack of self-discipline and persistence. So they don't want to go extra mile. They want to reap the rewards right away. They want to sow now and start the harvesting in the morning, and it doesn't grow. It's against the law. 
Do you feel that sometimes the younger generation today um, ha has the attitude you just mentioned, which I agree with, but also they feel entitled that they deserve more than the work that they put out? Definitely, I somehow agree with you on this point, but we live in the era of a mind era. This has been said that from last uh, 500,000 years of civilization, what we have achieved from last 50 years, it is all our brain work, which is a remarkable thing. So some areas, if we use our smart way, our brain work, we should get re the reward uh, in an excellent way. Uh, so, but then they're, by using that, a principle or using the reward faster, especially for young people, they need to understand what they are creating, not competing. When you create and invent something uniquely, definitely there are unique rewards in our life for that. So nothing comes easy. If they want a faster result and faster reward, they need to put little hard work, a lot of invention, creativity, and persistence, and it, it won't come overnight, that's for sure. You know, I feel like sometimes people think that they are going the extra mile when in reality they're barely doing what is required. What have you found are misconceptions surrounding this principle of going the extra mile? <clears throat> well, um, if I do more and give more of my time, if I'm not paid for, like, you know, uh, why not to give more, I wanted to say, that... Um, give more respect, give more value, give more time to the people, and uh, promote ourselves. Uh, but the misconception is surrounding with this principle, I would like to say, um, especially young people uh, have indecision in their life since childhood. They don't know what they want to do after their school. They don't know what to, what to do after their college. And when they go to job, they don't know. It's always been told. So they are not taking in, uh, initiative and they <clears throat> misrepresent or maybe fail to understand this principle going the extra mile is so vitally important in each individual's uh, life. And they think uh, its success is very easy, and uh, there are tidbits online and um, the word of mouth, people have been uh, phrasing and marketing the things which they should be not doing, and the young people are like a copycat, and they, wanna, uh, they want to copy the, the principle which – works, but it doesn't work overnight. So they think the success is the fastest thing they can get it, and most of the time they end up getting failure in that. So uh, we need to remove, I can say it in one sentence, like, you know, we need to remove the facts from the fiction. Hmm. We need to remove the facts from the opinion of the people of the success, faster success. So if there is a faster success, they need to put their head and heart and mind in that to find the facts. Because if they will run towards the facts, they will actually realize that most than 95% of people have opinion. And that's the, the cheapest commodity on planet Earth is the opinion. So we need to stay away from that. Yes, that's a really, really powerful point. You know, you mentioned the story about your uncle and the bike, and that was from your childhood. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed any positive uh, experiences in your professional adult life where you've applied going the extra mile? Yes, so it's very powerful, very meaningful for me. Since childhood, it's still vividly I can see that I'm washing my bike. and I can. So each individual service or client, or in a personal way or in a clientele way, I apply this principle uh, not to just give what they've been asked. I, also, I always put my creative thought in that what extra I can do. Every morning when I'm dealing with my client or my, um, any, any personal service, I always ask my, this is one of my favorite questions in the morning, how can I improve my service today? And then I just jot down some idea. I can do better than, excellent than, than yesterday. So I'm always in a chase of competing myself to bring the best service from yesterday. So each time I bring creative ideas, creative way, but always in a positive and a friendly way. Everything I do for my clients or my personal people, I always do in a positive and in, in a friendly way with my good and best tone and best of my vocabulary. I use that my, in my service, and it comes by naturally. And people will love it because if, when you're real, they will see it in you, in your heart and in your face and on your words too as well. So I do practice bringing the, this principle in the way of creating and asking myself, how can I improve my service today? 
So I bring all the good ideas. And the most important thing I, I wanted to say is that being resourceful is so important. If I'm resourceful to bring the best idea, best answers, best concept, uh, best way of doing things to my client and making their life easy, and, and, and I can get what, uh, whatever I need. So since childhood, I've been asking myself, is not what uh, I want from the world. Instead of we should be asking, like, I want this from the world. I should be asking, we should be asking something like this, what makes me so special that I will do it to the world and they will shower to me with whatever things I may desire. Yeah, that's really, yeah, what can, what can I do for the world to deserve what I'm looking from the world? That's a good perspective. Yes, yes. What you know, makes me, me special that I can do it for the world, yes. Yes. You know, I was wondering, um, do you feel like the concept of going the extra mile could have some people think, well, a mile is a long way, but you just mentioned that you ask yourself every day, how can I do better for my clients? It doesn't necessarily have to be a dramatic, tremendous leap from yesterday. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can mm -hmm. be incremental, steady, consistent improvements, and then over time that compound effect turns out to be just a dramatic extra mile. Have you seen that? Yes, definitely. And I also give a uh, very simple and uh, maybe a funny example. I said uh, to make a towering giant stone pyramid, it takes a while than the making a chicken coop. Mm -hmm. you, you need to have a persistent, like to make a strong monument. It doesn't build overnight. Any pyramid was not built overnight. It takes time. So with consistency, with your positive mental attitude, going the extra mile with improving the same thing over and over and becoming an expert, like a scientist and doctor in the line of your field, so that people may address us as an expert. That's why experts write their own ticket. And that's why we stand in a higher bracket of success pyramid that where we stand out because to known, especially known for our skills and talent. And, and the time and time history is the result and, and the story itself. People who've been expert in their line of their field, they have reaped the most best rewards in their life. And they've been doing constantly improving and, and, and bringing implementation new ideas in the same line of the field. They don't put their head in 10 different things until they reach that stage. Once they achieve the success of one area, then they can multiply in a different way. Yes. So yeah, I would like point. to say an example, Mr. Warren Buffett or Bill Gates, they didn't start off with 20 different ideas or 20 different uh, business areas, uh, but they started in one line of a field. And when they reached that stage, once they made their first million probably in I don't know which how many years, and the next million would have done probably in the less than 90% of that way they, they have made it. So getting, getting at one point, focusing at one thing, and uh, giving the best, and the, repeating the same principles and same discipline for the next project can be possible. Yeah. And giving our best shots, yeah. I think that's, that's really helped, and I've been doing since childhood, uh, and I love it each day. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, your personal successes. Have you, can you think of a, uh, an example with a client of yours that you coach where you've taught them how to go the extra mile and then they saw a, um, a transformation in their life? Yes, uh, I think I have dozens and dozens of uh, uh, case studies and reality. A lot of people can go on my LinkedIn and see what global clients are talking about. I specifically remember um, there was a student from a different country and she um, just got a sponsorship and all. And I taught her so many um, the lessons. I said, you, you're not only just here to study, but you need to work. You need to have a vision that what if you want to stay in Canada and you need to go extra mile each day, just not only learning, but also thinking ahead of time what I'm going to work and each, which area of work. So start reading books and writing ideas, 10 ideas a day, like how can you improve your, uh, your service in the line of your field. And by the time the day will come, and you will already have thousands of ideas, and one idea can change your life. So most of the time when we get projects, we start thinking at that time. If we think a little ahead of time that if these are the line of my field, or this is a job, or this is a business, this is the client I'm going to meet or do, we need to start preparation because I think preparation is the key to success. Uh, nothing can take place of preparation and persistence, and I think so. So a lot of my clients, and they reap the reward because when I give step-by-step -step plans to them, 
to create um, a roadmap, and, and then once they follow that uh, principles, and their rewards are definitely some people get rewards within a day, some people get within a month. It depends on how they take action on that. Yes. And, and I strongly believe uh, personal initiative is the most important thing in our life. And maybe this, uh, this recording, hundreds and millions of people are listening now. And what they're going to do after this recording is over? Are we going to take some initiative on that, some points which we really liked it and it makes sense to us. So the most important thing is taking the action part, taking personal initiative when we go to seminars and workshops and listen lectures or read books. And we get ideas every day. So ideas are in the air. That's what Thomas Edison said. That so He said ideas are in the air. So you just, you just take it and perfect it. Yeah, and, and so don't just do it mean, uh, at the minimum – do that extra yeah. extra bit so that you stand out because anyone yeah. can do a task and you then yes. uh, look like anyone else out there, your peers or your coworkers. Mm -hmm. But if you want that boss to look at you a little differently when you do a, mm -hmm. come in earlier, stay a little later, do it a little bit better, you then are going yeah. that extra mile. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, I think uh, I believe that uh, wholeheartedly. You know, uh, I was wondering what inspired you to become a mm -hmm. Napoleon Hill certified leader, um, and then what words of wisdom would you give to someone that is considering to do the same? Well, um, I'm glad you asked me because uh, it's, it's first of all it's an honor and pr it's a privilege to be a uh, Napoleon Hill certified leader, where this principle is over a, a century and it's lingering and most of us, uh, they don't know about that, what this principle is all about and this uh, secret formula is all about, which are actually no secret. These are the simple things that have been uh, adopted from all the successful people around the world, from John D. Rockefeller and to Carnegie and Thomas Edison and all around the world people. Uh, so my, my, what inspired me was to empower young people for success, for a massive success that I would like to say that creating the definite, definiteness of purpose during the age of 10 will lead you to massive success and one can get retired at the age of 30 instead of 60 years. And I'm an expert coach. Uh, probably I can say that uh, to empower young people on that area. Imagine like if we start our decision making and uh, having a major purpose at the age of 10, by the time we do that research and study for another five years, and we become 15. And then by the time 10 years of practical experience putting in that, I don't think so that we need to stay till 60 years to get retired. I believe a person can get retired happily in 30 years and keep working for another 30 years. So that inspired me to empower young people for success because I think uh, there's a lot of room. Uh, we need to improve the roots uh, for the coming generation and generation so I took this initiative to coming from nowhere, from being homeless twice to straight here at Napoleon Hill Foundation. I had the vision and dream to become certified leader and grasp all the profound ideas and concepts and share it to the world who are deserving and who are ready to learn something. And I think I'm just doing my part. And the only thing I've learned at this uh, foundation and, and this principle that I'm still a learner. I don't sure. proclaim or proudly say that I, I know everything. I'm just a learner. I'm a student. But what I've learned, it, practically it works, and I got massive results with these principles and uh, secrets. And I want to just simply share to people and don't want to take the credit I'm something or I'm this. It's just sharing the information out there because there are a lot of young people who are deserving. They don't know. They don't have the right direction. So my mission is to um, just empower them and in my last breath of my life. Youth and woman empowerment, this is what I want you to do since childhood. And I think this certification has given me a, a big, b bigger and broader channel and support to spread that uh, the, the ideas and secret. And um, considering uh, this, is, this is a remarkable thing, and I want to continue to keep educating myself to bring the best um, formulas and secret to provide to the world. And it's an honor and privilege to be a certified leader, especially to empower young people and youth and women. Yes. Well, Happy, let's um, wrap up the principle number four, going the mm -hmm. extra mile with, let's uh, tell us, yes. what do you feel yeah. the easy next steps action plan would be for putting this principle into action? 
Uh, you personally or are you asking me in general? Like, if someone is thinking about principle number four, going the extra mile, where do they start? And what are some action steps that they can implement into their life? Well, it's very simple. There is no nothing uh, rocket science in that. It's a very simple thing. I would like to say, um, provide the excellent service, provide the excellent service, and they will reap the excellent rewards. Uh, find your positive motive behind your purpose, and do more than you paid for. Um, I will say, respect more, give more, love more, from the day one in the personal and the professional area. And it will come up in your character and attitude, and it will become in a habit of doing more. And when we do more, it's become in a habit of doing more. Each day enhance the habit of doing the more in a creative and loving way. And also I would like to say challenge the golden man between the ears to produce more and creative ways of providing friendly and professional way to offer your service each time as the first time. And I think these are a few principles. And um, in, in, in order to achieve this principle, I think there are four simple steps. If anybody can apply this, they can get a massive self-help image and, and financial freedom too as well. It's been said in past. First of all, we need to forgive all others with no string attached, whoever it is. If we cannot forgive others, we cannot move ahead in life because there are a lot of grudges in our heart and mind we keep in day-to-day -day life that we don't like this or we don't like that man or woman or, or the person. Once we forgive others, we are actually making a lot of room in our heart and mind so that we can empower and bring more ideas. Second step is we need to look at ourselves at best. It doesn't matter whatever where we are coming from, the immigrant or whoever we are, if you have a proper English diction, uh, diction accent or your vocabulary is less or more, it doesn't matter. Do your best. Look at yourself at your best, and the whole world will look at you at, in a positive way too. And forgive yourself with kind eyes. We become so hard on ourselves that we tend not to forgive ourselves. We are human too. We must have also hurt someone or cheat or harm something. We are human. We do mistakes. So forgive ourselves with kind eyes and move ahead with positive mental attitude to do our best. And then the last I would like to say, don't worry about others, what others have done or what others are doing. Keep up with your pace and don't feel guilty. Just march on your own drums rather than marching on your, somebody else's drum. We, every morning we have two choices. Either we wake up with confidence or frustration. The choice is ours. Thank you so much. Excellent. Well, Happy, thank you for your time uh, ch chatting about this uh, principle going the extra mile. What's the best way that people can reach out and connect with you? Thank you so much, lovely listeners, for spending your precious time to listening to my, this exclusive audio of my book, Pathway to a Positive Mental Attitude, Principle of Going the Extra Mile. What is that one thing that you liked and admired? If you already knew, what was that one thing if you can mention in the comment below? Also, if you learn or you are taken away some good ideas from this particular episode of my podcast, what would you like to share with your beloved one? Please mention that too. Also, in order to get paid more, there is one simple secret. If you already know, I want to say congratulations, but if you like to know that what is the secret principle of going the extra mile is if you render more and better service than that which you are paid for, and sooner or later you will receive compound interest on compound interest from your investment. It's worth trying. Many millionaires and successful people along with Napoleon Hill, they have tried and did it and they have achieved beyond compound interest. If you really wanted to be successful in your personal and professional life, I personally suggest you to ask these two simple questions every morning. Question number one in your personal department you should ask, how can I increase my love today? The love towards yourself, towards your beloved one, your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your children, your mother, father, or your community neighbor. Question number two you can ask in a professional department is every morning you should ask yourself, how can I increase and advance my service today? How can I serve best today to my clients, to my customers, to my student? And you see the magical things start happening in your life. This simple question, how can I increase and empower and advance my service today? This is simple question will lead you to the massive success, your legacy lifestyle, will flourish like 
never before you have seen and you will reach to the pinnacle of whatever you desire in your life you will achieve easily and happily it's worth trying this is happy bins here and you can reach me to happybins.com or happyideashow.com thank you